All right, I'm always getting asked the question, what are constants on the SAT? And well, here I am to answer that question. When it comes to dealing with constants, first identify what style of constant problem it is, and then from there, you're gonna apply the appropriate technique. In this video, we're really gonna focus on one of those techniques called matching coefficients. Now, when do you use matching coefficients? Well, you're looking for a single equation and something about the words constants, and then maybe like A, B, C might be M or N, you might see a K in there. And let's just get right into it with this example problem. So notice in the top, we've got this equation, we've got this wording, the equation above is true for all X, where A, B, and C are constants. What is the value of A plus B plus C? Well, in this kind of simpler type of constants question, all we're gonna have to do is match the terms. So notice I'm highlighting x squared in green, x in blue, and the constant in red. And I'm just gonna set all of those terms equal to each other. And in order for those terms to be equivalent, well, it's necessary that their coefficients are equal. So this means A is gonna have to equal seven, B is gonna have to equal five, C is gonna to have to be negative nine. Once we've identified what A, B, and C are, well, all we gotta do is find A plus B plus C, so I'm just gonna add them. Seven plus five plus negative nine. And when I do that, I'm gonna find that my answer is three. Easy enough, we're gonna go ahead on to some more complex questions, but before we do that, just if you enjoy this content, take a moment to hit the subscribe button down below. Also below, I'm gonna put some recommendations for some books that you may find helpful in your SAT journey, as well as a link to my website. So feel free to check that out, see what content is available there, extra practice problems. Now here's a tougher one, and the reason this one is so difficult is because if we look at the original equation, we see that the two sides of the equation don't share the same form. The left side is this like somewhat factored form and the right side is totally expanded. So what I need to do is get them in the same form. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through the foiling steps here. You can see the arrows, I multiply every term by every other term. There is a reason that I'm coloring the values the way that I am. Essentially, anything with an x cubed is going to be yellow. Anything with an x squared is going to be green. And anything purple, well, that just corresponds to the x. And finally, our constant term, the one that doesn't have any x on it, I'm just going to make that this nice blue. Maybe that's a cerulean color. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I need to organize this better to see everything. So I'm gonna bring the x squared terms together, x terms together, everything's grouped nicely. And then this next step's a little weird. I'm factoring out the x squared from the two green terms, and I'm factoring out the x from the two purple terms. This allows me to very clearly see what the coefficients are and then make a comparison to the original right-hand side. Uh, which you can see is now my top equation. So if I match the x cubed or the yellow terms, I get this. If I match the green terms, the x squared terms, I come up with this equation. Matching the purple terms, I come up with this. And finally, matching the constant terms, I end up with this. Well, negative eight equals negative eight isn't super interesting, right? Like we all kind of know that's true. So I'm just gonna go ahead and erase that because that's not gonna be helpful to us. Of the three equations, the one in yellow is the one where I only have one constant. So I can pretty easily figure out what A is by setting those equal to each other. For the green and the purple, I have two constants. So maybe I gotta decide which one looks easier. Since I've already solved for A, I can plug it in and then simply go through the steps of solving for b. When I do this, looks like I'm gonna find b is equal to two. Now that I know a is five and b is two, if I wanna find the product of a and b, well, that just means multiply. So I'm gonna take that five and I'm gonna take that two, I'm gonna multiply them. And just like that, I have found that my answer is 10. 
Feel free to check out the future videos that are coming. If you hit like and subscribe, I'm gonna post plenty more about Constance, so that way you have a full list of videos to really help you in your SAT prep. And again, don't forget about the book and the website recommendations below if you're looking for more content, helpful material as you go to prepare for this treacherous exam.